Hey, what's up everybody? Nexel here. Today we are playing Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and we've got two new notices to go over for today. So let's go ahead and talk about the first one, which is going to be this Hector Avatar board. So we have until November 7th to pick these up. I really think that they released the Coco ones around this time because of Halloween and Day of the Dead coming up next week. So super, super exciting. We've got the nice little skeleton look going for us. Um, but aside from the fact that I think everyone should watch Coco, uh, when we're talking about the Avatar board, whenever we talk about any Avatar board, the one thing that you really want to keep in mind is what skills does it come with? Because really, whenever you buy an Avatar board, if you're not buying it because you like the look, it's mainly going to be for the skills that are included. So we're really just going to talk about the skills when it comes to this avatar board. So we got three skills here. We've got attack boost 10 max gauge 0, attack boost 10 max gauge 1, and defense boost 6 max. So let's go ahead and talk about attack boost 10 max gauge 0 and gauge 1 at the same time. So these are really, really good skills. Remember that the biggest attack boost max that's out there right now is attack boost 11, but it's only regular attack boost 11 max. It is not attack boost 11 max gauge something. I believe attack boost 11 max gauge 2 is going to be this month's Coliseum reward. But as of right now, it doesn't exist. And it, it does not exist in a way that's gauge 0 or gauge 1. So these are really, really good skills when you're using them properly. So the way that these skills work is that when you activate a metal special attack, it decreases how much cost you ended up paying for that metal. So let's say with all like the metals running around that have a six gauge cost like Kingdom Hearts 3 Marluxia or Kingdom Hearts 3 Monster Sora, there's a lot of metals, especially the tier nines that are running around with a really high gauge cost. So having these skills on them decreases how many gauges are spent when you activate that metal special attack. So for example, let's just say we put attack boost 10 max gauge 1 on a Kingdom Hearts 3 monster form Sora. Once we get to that monster form Sora and activate its special attack, the metal will only cost one gauge. It will only consume one gauge as opposed to the original six that it would have without this skill on it. So it's really, really good at decreasing gauge costs, making sure that you have more gauges to activate metals later down the line. Now, this is important for things like reverse keyblades, because remember that reverse keyblades have very, very low amounts of gauges. So when you have like attack boost gauge, or I'm sorry, attack boost 10 max gauge one, you can take a metal that costs six gauges and effectively reduce it down to only spending one gauge. And that's important when you've only got between like 10 to 13 gauges. So it's really, really good for reverse setups for sure and on metals that cost usually about four or more gauges. Now there are certain things that I want you to keep in mind when it comes to these particular gauge skills because there's two really big caveats to using these skills. Number one is that uh, with these skills you have to have the initial cost to pay for the metal special attack to go off. So referencing back Kingdom Hearts 3 Monster Sora, it costs six gauges. Even if you had attack boost 10 max gauge one, you still have to have six gauges to first activate Monster Form Sora's special attack. So after you activate it, the skill will kick in and decrease the cost, how much is spent to one gauge, but you still have to have the original six gauges in order to activate the metal special attack. So, Let's just say you went into Monster Form Sora, you have it with Attack Boost 10 Max Gauge 1, and you only have 4 gauges going into the metal. You can't activate the metal special attack because you don't have the initial cost. So remember that these gauge skills, these gauge reducing skills, they don't lower the initial cost, they decrease just how much is spent to activate that special attack. So really keep that in mind. Don't think that it's going to take your cost 6 metal and bring it down to only 1 gauge cost. It only the skill only changes how much is spent, not how much the initial cost is. So just keep that in mind. The second thing I want you to keep in mind with these gauge skills is that if you're using a metal that has less, has pretty much zero gauges, it has a zero gauge cost. So for example, Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie B has a zero gauge cost. If you put attack boost 10 max gauge one on that metal, when you activate that metal special attack, it will, the skill will forcibly consume one gauge. So let's just say you had Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie B with extra attack, which originally cost zero gauges. There is no activation cost in order to proc that metal. When you have attack boost 10 max gauge one, having extra attack on that Kyrie B will consume two gauges when it originally consumed none. 
So just keep that in mind that attack boost max gauge one, if you're using a metal, if you're using it on a metal that causes zero gauges, it's going to forcibly take away the gauges from you. Just keep that in mind. Now, attack boost 10 max gauge zero is a phenomenal skill. So one of the best things about these gauge reducing skills is that it almost guarantees you're going to be able to get any extra attacks off. So let's just say a metal costs six gauges and you have seven gauges left. You've got the metal with attack boost 10 max gauge one. You activate the metal special attack. It consumes one gauge because of the skill. You're left over with six gauges left in order to make sure you get that second extra attack off. So these skills are really, really good for metals with extra attack. And that's even more relevant today because there are a lot of metals that give plus metal strength. So for example, ultimate form Sora or even the new second form Sora, those give upright metal strength plus 1,500. Having something like attack boost max gauge zero on it will guarantee you as long as you have the initial gauge cost that you're getting both those attacks off. You're getting both special attacks off. You're getting plus 1,500 upright metal strength for each activation giving you plus 3,000 upright metal strength. It's just really good to have gauge zero on something where you want to have that extra attack consistently going off because as long as you can pay for the metal originally, you're definitely going to get that second extra attack off. So that's just really, really good if you ask me. Being able to pull that off consistently is going to make sure that your setups are always doing as much damage as you want. So I think that these skills are really, really great, especially on metals where you want to make sure you've got that constant activation, whether it's an attacking metal where you want that attack to go off twice or whether it's a buffing metal slash buffing hybrid attacker metal where you want to make sure you're getting those buffs off consistently every turn. So for example, you guys have seen me use some setups where I had ultimate form Sora used as a buffer where I wasn't using him for damage, but if I had attack boost 10 max gauge zero, as long as I could originally pay the three gauge cost for ultimate form Sora, I am getting every single turn plus 3000 upright metal strength because of extra attack and attack boost 10 max gauge zero. I don't have to worry about any gauges pretty much when you have attack boost 10 max gauge zero so attack boost 10 max gauge zero really good gauge one not as good but still a really solid option considering that attack boost 10 max is like second on the line right only short of attack boost 11 max so just really really good attack boost skills overall talking about defense boost six max so really what i want to say about this is that there's really almost no place for it Really, Defense Boost Max is going to be used for PvP, but now that there are so many PvP medals running around that have Guard Break, so for example, we have Dissidia, Leon, Dissidia, Cloud, we've got Kingdom Hearts 3 Larxene, Kingdom Hearts 3 Roxas, Kingdom Hearts 3 Monster Form Sora, Kingdom Hearts 3 Dark Riku, Kingdom Hearts 3 Zeus, um, we've got Supernova Plus Era. There's so many Defense Break medals running around that PvP is almost effectively worthless, um, and there's no real point to the rewards minus getting like a thousand jewels if you're able to get it, because the new tier 10s don't need to be brought to Supernova Plus, they don't require the rewards from the tier 9 dual meow wows, the platinum tickets don't really mean anything. So PvP is really not in a good spot right now, there's really no real incentive to be participating in it, unless you're new and need the rewards. Unless you need those blue fairies, unless you need to bring up some tier 9s because you don't have like a super great setup right now. You still need to work on it. You still need some of those tier 9 dual meow wows. So other than that, PvP is really not too great. I feel like I have no idea how the top players consistently keep playing PvP every week, ranking high every single time. I'm not really sure. I wouldn't have that sort of dedication to it. But yeah, defense boost maxes are really mainly for PvP. Um, when you're going to be using defense boost like maxes for content, for like PvE content, it's likely that defense boost 5 max is going to be enough. So if you already have defense boost 5 max and you're like, oh, this is defense boost 6, I need the newest one, you sort of kind of don't actually. Because I did some of the math, so defense boost 5 max reduces the amount of damage you're taking down to 10%. Defense boost 6 max reduces the amount of damage you're taking down to 9.17%. That's only an 83% difference in the amount of damage you're receiving. So let's go back to PvE content. If you have the maximum amount of HP without any passive skills, which I believe is 5,870, with defense boost 5 max, the enemy needs to hit you or you're able to survive 
as long as you can uh, take a hit that's less than 58,700. So if you get hit with anything more than 58,700, Defense Boost 5 Max is not going to cut it for you. Now, if we do the same math with Defense Boost 6 Max, the maximum amount of damage you can take with Defense Boost 6 Max is going to be 64,012. Now, that's really only about a 6,000 difference between Defense Boost 5 Max and Defense Boost 6 Max. And when you think about the PvE content, the enemy is either weak enough where that you can survive with Defense Boost 5 Max, or they're going to completely obliterate you with like billions of points of damage. So it's just scratch damage between Defense Boost 5 Max and Defense Boost 6 Max. I wouldn't pull on this or I wouldn't buy this avatar board with the intent of defense boost 6 max personally. It's just not enough damage mitigation. It's only 6,000 points when it comes to surviving PvE content using defense boost maxes. So right now, I really think you could still run around with defense boost 5 max. I really feel like this is more for people that have joined recently and don't have any defense boost max skills. So if you need to play PvP, if you need those platinum tickets, if you need those jewels, if you need those blue fairies, then you definitely need defense boost max for sure going into pvp while i said earlier that pvp is not in a good spot you still if you want to be competitive have to have defense boost max it's just a requirement at this point so it's a really solid board you're getting three max skills you're getting one gem whatever the rest of the stuff is just kind of like formalities at, it, at this point but it's a really, really good set of skills that you're going to be getting in this one. So if you need the attack boost maxes, by all means, go for it. If you need the defense boost max, go for it. If you're looking for the next best thing, you're pulling for the attack boost max skills on this avatar board. Not for the defense boost 6 max. So just keep that in mind. Um, how long is this video looking at? So we're looking at about 11 minutes and pretty much about 12 minutes. So I'm actually going to stop here and then we're going to do the second form Sora. Or I think I might post them in reverse because people want to hear about second form Sora first. But yeah, that is going to be the video about the Hector Avatar board as well as some reminders on how the game works. Hopefully this was helpful to some people, especially the newer players that aren't really sure how all these buffs work. I know I talked a little bit fast, but hopefully uh, everyone was able to keep up and that if you have any questions, you could definitely throw them down below. So with that being said, that is the end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, like I just said, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to drop them down in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer when I have the time. I do have a new Discord question. So the Discord is going to be down in what corner? That corner? That corner over there, that is the permanent link for the Discord. Remember that capitals do matter, so if you want to join the Discord, you have to have those capital letters and those lowercase letters specifically as they are. But the question for the week, in order to go with the Halloween theme, um, we're going to extend the question of the week from now until the end of next week in order, again, for Halloween. So, what is the best costume change in the Kingdom Hearts series? So, there's a lot of good options to choose from. You've got the Nightmare Before Christmas from Kingdom Hearts 1, the Nightmare Before Christmas in Kingdom Hearts 2. You've got Atlantica. You've got the Pride Lands versions of Sora Donald Goofy. You've got Timeless River uh, Pirates. You've got the Pirate ones, um, the Tron ones. So, there's a lot of good options. But let me know in the Discord what you think the best costume change is in Kingdom Hearts. And that's going to go along with the theme of Halloween for the week but that's all for now again thank you all so much for watching and until next time take it easy